Hey, this is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joined this evening by two guys. Yeah, two of them. Ethan Moses is one of them. I am. You seem to be uh, shocked of the two. I was startled. I got the, the heaves and the jeeves and the spooks. You spooked me big time, man. I gotta, I, I, oh, my gosh. Use all the tricks to keep the, the energy season. level up. You know. Oh, I guess. It's up. Yeah, something's up. That's it's what the up. fans that aren't our fans want. <laughs> oh, give me yeah. chills. Aaron, Aaron yeah. McHale, how are you feeling? I'm calm and collected. <laughs> Ethan got all the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I got all the heebs over here. All the heebs, the jeebs. <laughs> The dweebs. In, the in between. In betweebs. <laughs> in betweebs. <laughs> Aaron, exactly. it's been a bit since you've been on the Night Force. Um, I know yeah. you've been doing it in the game world, but what have you been doing outside of games? I watched a little movie, a little indie film by Todd Phillips called The Hangover Part 3. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and for how much they call that movie uh, an epic ending to an epic trilogy... Someone's head is up their ass, but it was all right. If they used the uh, word epic twice, I mean, tell me, like tell me what themes you liked the most. I mean, there were some themes. Like, there was, you know, there were some themes. I learned something about was, a bunch know, of guys. I learned about Vegas. That mm, they mm-hmm. went to, like, they went to Vegas, and there was Caesar's Palace, and then they came back to Vegas, and surprise, Caesar's Palace is still there. Huh? Mm. Didn't go anywhere. This is mm. a casino documentary. Mm. I haven't seen this. <laughs> Yeah, that would that'd be a horrible documentary. It's like you get like a British guy just to say, like, <laughs> back in, like one year ago, Vegas had Caesar's Palace, and then we returned a year later, and Caesar's Palace was still there. <laughs> I, you know, you know the Hangout 3, or Hangout. The hangout. The hangout. <laughs> hey, guys, come on over. They hang out. They the Hangout 3. Google, Google sponsored <laughs> the movie, and they changed the title. That's the I feel PG like... version. I feel like Bradley Cooper and Zach Galifianakis and Ed Helms showed up. They paid them. They're like, okay, let's do this. Let's just we got we've got five fucking days. <laughs> this is all we're gonna you know. This is all we're gonna spend on it. That I love you guys. So bad. I, you know, we owe you one. Oh, we said we were gonna do a trilogy. We really didn't think you were gonna do it, Todd. But you did it, Todd. You made a trilogy out of a movie that should not have a trilogy. So, Damn it, Todd. You did it, Todd. Todd, what were you thinking, Todd? <laughs> I can't believe it, Todd. You made three movies, Todd. How much? How much money do you think Hangover Three made? Internet Too much. Was. was it good at no all? No matter what. Was it good? I I was I was sick and entertained, so I don't know. I'm not. Wait, the wait, wait, wait. That's, <laughs> that's a horrible review. I was Before hungry. Made, I had to I go to the bathroom, <laughs> and it was kind of boring. Zach Galifianakis is who he is. Yeah, I hope he doesn't get pigeonholed. <laughs> I hope it's not too late for him. Oh, man. I love Zach Galifianakis so much. Um, they made that character just too weird. He, the, It was a good, weird character, and then it got too weird. You know what I mean? It, it like, got they really just, weird. He, come on. Come on. You're better than it, everybody. But. He got like unbelievable. Like, there's a part in the movie where they put down his criminal record, like all his felonies, and if he's ever gone to jail. Yeah. yeah. It's like super fucking thick. Yeah. <laughs> Was, but he's like was, he's okay. He's he's wandering around. He's a loose cannon. And yeah. It's like you're supposed to laugh at it and forget that he's got like a million felonies. I was horrified because I I just was thinking, what did he do? What could he have done? Yeah, what Probably did, bad bad stuff. He so, ate a guy. He yeah, ate a man. <laughs> ate, ate a man alive. <laughs> I, ate him alive. Had no desire to see that see that movie. I didn't really like. I didn't really like two for all it was worth. You know, it was yeah. two. Two was worse. Yeah, two wasn't good at all either. So, but one the, was so funny though. Yeah, God, it was funny. And then, but three, it's a real slide. But three was not like the first two. Like, I heard it like went to. It was like a dark comedy more so than anything. It was like a dark action comedy. Yeah. With the characters from that movie you saw and used to like. That's pretty much yeah. all it really was. Yeah. Yeah. The Remember Wayne, when Wayne's these guys were together involved? and went to Vegas? <laughs> the Wayne brothers. I, I wish the Wayne's brothers were involved. Mike Epps was in there. Mike Epps made a comeback. <laughs> Mike so Epps representing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, everybody was like, you know, oh, where'd Mike Epps go? Why was he in the second movie? He's in the third movie, everyone, so don't worry about it. He That's has fine. shit to do, like not be in the second movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Tyson was in the second movie again, I think. Was he? I think at the oh, very he end. Yeah, he sang. Yep. He, he was there and he said, ha ha, sucker, got your money. And <laughs> I was like, damn it, Tyson, you did. 
<laughs> he did it again, Tyson. <laughs> he did it, Tyson. <laughs> oh, but other than that, oh, so I'm like a week behind on The Walking Dead now. Ooh. But I watched so, the I watched the first episode of this season, and yeah, you're right. There's a lot of gore happening yeah. just for oh. the sake of it. Just, yeah, they said, "Fuck it, let's just let's not make something like singularly singularly disturbing. It's just like flood of gore." It was a real cavalcade of what can zombies do and what can people do to get blood everywhere. I mean, yeah. I think they what happened was they must have bought a certain amount of entrails for the whole show and kind of <laughs> realized that they, they have a little more than they had planned for, so they need to get some of that out because that, that keeps mm. on coming. Uh, Inventory's a bitch, yeah. Ethan, where'd you leave, leave off with The Walking Dead? I'm, I'm, I'm caught up. Okay. Like, I... I yeah, I'm caught up. Like we'll do this spoiler free, but I really, I really like this season so far. I get it. Oh man, this is gonna be a good season. I it was it was I, I liked you know I know everybody gave the show crap for season two. I actually like season two, um, but how they're that I like the ebb and flow of it. You know, it's a roller coaster ride. I mean, you never know. I mean, you really never know what's gonna happen. And this, unlike you know some of the past season, this start off with a fucking bang man like holy cow like just yeah just yeah, it's well, they tied up a lot of the dumb drama that i hated like they there's still drama yeah. on the show and i mean it's yeah it's ultimately you know how the people are surviving and getting along more so than anything else in the world but um but yeah they, they had some things that were just dragging it down for me that they um either kind of wrapped up or just moved on without really like i didn't need a conclusion to some yeah. of the some of the bullshit and uh Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel it feels a lot more fresh this season, and it it's got some yeah. um, got some trajectory to it. So um, really yeah. really excited for where that. I didn't expect to. I was actually kind of you know cooling on the show, but for two episodes, hell yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh yeah. So Aaron, you haven't seen the second episode yet? No, not yet. It's okay. sitting on my DVR. Yeah, I, I really have nothing to say about it because I'll get too excited and just. Yeah, so we won't talk. Let's not bring those heebie-jeebies back. Conversation over. <laughs> We're done. So I um, I finished the killing, uh, season two, which um, again I'm so pissed off at Cole. He um, he's one of our big TV guys, and he told me to watch this damn show, and it fucking gets canceled in the middle of me loving it. So, um, <laughs> so then I I got through the two seasons that are on Netflix, and I uh picked up the third season on. Amazon, but I don't really know. I, I know they're not going to have a fourth season, so I'm just like, do I even want to get into this? Like, uh, I really enjoyed the first two seasons, and I kind of like maybe I should have just left it at that. But I'm inching my way back into that show. But if you do like crime dramas, uh, this is like, um, you know, much more drawn out than any of the network TV stuff, and it's it's got a you know it's a really kind of a depressing show, but and but it's really entertaining from uh, from just all the ups and downs that they go through in solving this case. And um, especially now that you can binge watch it, because I know a lot of people were apparently frustrated with the show mm-hmm. with how the first season ended. And but when you can watch it all at once. It's, it's really tightly done. So uh, I still recommend the show. Just maybe, you know, maybe we just watch the first two seasons. <laughs> just, and, and for anybody who's a, a fan of SVU and then goes to watch his show, uh, just know that it takes them a, Super long yeah. time to <laughs> solve was the I talking, crime. Was I talking <laughs> like, to you? Like my wife. Well, my wife actually mentioned it because she she watches SVU and the killing, and she was like, "Man, Benson would have solved this in like a day." <laughs> <laughs> so did you do realize those SVU shows take just a handful days. of hours? Yeah. No, I I can't remember if it was on a podcast <laughs> or not, uh, or if I was talking offline about it. But when you're wa- oh, it was it was talking to Gifford about it. Um, when you watched when I was watching the show. I kind of was hit by the same thing because they have to string this out over, you know, 12, 20 episodes. They make a lot of mistakes and they're just like, these are just after like three or four of their, you know, um, you know picking the wrong dude, pointing the finger at the wrong dude. You're kind of like, these cops are terrible. They are like, yeah. they're not competent I'm at all. Them, like they, they have evidence in their hands and they're like, this seems important. And they just drop it off a cliff or something yeah. like, Oh shit, we got to go get it for two. Episodes. Ooh, two of them. <laughs> <laughs> we got to find that important clue again. 
what what did you do with my 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 my, my climbing gear? Oh, my lock. And then there's uh, two gotta, more episodes. Got to go <laughs> back home and get it. <laughs> It's like the twenty four of crime dramas. <laughs> yeah. Hey, at least at least they're going they're doing the more of the you know, twelve episode seasons. At least we're in that era of T V now and not in the twenty four episode seasons anymore. Cause yeah. twenty four just looks silly in hindsight, uh, compared to some of the stuff. But um Oh yeah. I also watched as much as I could stand of Silent Hill Revelations because <laughs> that was on Netflix and I heard things about it and knew I didn't want to spend money on it, like, directly. So, I really liked the first Silent Hill movie. Yeah, I thought it was good. This one is fucking terrible. It looks like a made-for-TV movie. It is is some of the worst writing, just worst setup to get the character to Silent Hill. The It, it suffers from the fact that it was made to be one of the uh, 3D movies, so things are just jumping out of the screen and, like look disjointed um, all over the place and it's not scary it's only 90 minutes long it's only 90 minutes long and I couldn't make through make it through a full hour so um wow it was really really frustrating to watch and um damn it that series deserves a better movie yeah absolutely dude it's it's like the same thing with Resident Evil it, it's like they lost the, I mean when the Resident Evil movies came out they didn't exactly have that Resident Evil edge that we remembered, but they were still okay. But then once 3D came into it, it's just like, dude, we get it. You can use the technology. You know, like Albert Rusker takes his shoe off and then flings his shoe. He's right? like, why? Like, why would you use that? Silent Hill should never have had 3D. I, I would like to sit in that meeting where there was like this, you know, the, the person writing was like, look, guys, I have this great, I'm a huge fan of Silent Hill. Check this out. And they read it. They're like, you know, can we get 3D in this? Like, no, no, it's Silent Hill. You, you gotta understand, it's Silent Hill. Like, no, I, I, no, I do understand. We need to get 3D in this. Like, we definitely do. The, the Chinese market loves 3D. You're gonna love this <laughs> if they've got the 3D in it. Like, god damn it! Pyramid Head's head is made for 3D. It's a pyramid. Just, can, yeah, can you imagine that coming out of the screen? <laughs> He's like looking right at you. Big old sword. He's got. Whoo, man, made for 3D. 90 minutes. <laughs> is it just? Is it just like how much 3D is in it? Oh, I mean, I can only tell so much, but like, it, just every time like a new creature showed up, he has a a moment where he approaches the screen and something, you know, is gonna get it. <laughs> like, this is really, hey guys, really dumb looking. <laughs> like, and I don't, I don't know if it's from the game, but it's like a it's like a spider made out of mannequins, and it's holding a bunch of oh yeah, a bunch of heads, and yeah, one of those heads comes out of the screen and then opens up like an alien thing and has extra mouths, and I was like, yeah, wow, that was that didn't look like it belonged in that scene at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I mean, it ha- and it has both the first movie and this movie had a lot of potential. Like that, some of these scenes should have been terrifying, but yeah, um, it just was. It was wow. I didn't. I read the reviews, didn't think there's any way that movie could be that bad, but I thought I would still like it on the, on the I like the video games level, but that didn't even hold me over. Uh, I had that same reaction to Aliens, Colonial Marines, thought it was just gonna, you know, didn't think it was gonna be that bad. <laughs> there's, yeah, yeah. Well, why do we think like that? Like, like, I never can imagine something is really miserable, because in my mm. mind, there's good, and then there's, like, funny bad. You know, like, that whole idea of yeah. bad, bad just sometimes feels so foreign to me. But more and more I've realized that, no, there is a bad, bad. Mm. Uh, there was used to be just bad, bad, and good, bad, and then funny, bad came in, and people got confused. So they said, well, now we're going to go for funny, bad, because it's a safe bet. But those are just bad, bad. Yep. You know what I mean? It's kind of hate that bad, bad. I hate the bad bad. I like the, well, I like the funny bad. I don't even like the funny bad anymore. We've 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 <laughs> ruined the Superman. funny bad. We've uh, I actually that was a good movie. Needed <laughs> oh, a sequel or McLovin or two though. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that was in three D. McLovin in three D. Right at you. McLovin, you McLovin. Fake ID. <laughs> <laughs> fake ID right in your face. You can read the number and everything. Ethan, what have you been up to? Um, you know, after my. In a week of, of vacation, I decided it's time to get back in shape. I, I felt completely miserable when I got back. I gained way more weight than I needed to, so I've been really all about fitness and eating well and, and that kind of stuff. But 
That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about a, a, a beverage that my wife has concocted that she got from Pinterest. Um, and, you know, when you think Pinterest so trustworthy. is trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's always safe. You know, it's it's Pinterest, and so what it is, it's 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 water that that's supposed to be really refreshing, but it's also kind of supposed to help you with your appetite because I eat too much, so I need some help with that sometimes or all the time. And so she <laughs> makes it, and it's it's like ginger and le- lemon and then mint, and it you put it in water, and it, it's really delicious. It tastes really good. And so I had it last night. I was like, man, this is really crisp and delicious. This is something that I can imagine having on a hot summer day. Thirty minutes later, I almost pooped my pants. <laughs> it's a, it's like a natural diuretic, and she didn't think to tell me this. She was, just, she was like, "Oh, it's a diet." I was like, "I was like, Aubrey, did I eat something bad? Like, I'm just like, it's bad. Like, I'm in trouble here." And uh, I'm like, Aubrey, what are you are you okay? Because I'm because you know because we only have one restroom, so if we both have issues, we're in trouble. Um, and I was like, well, you know what what you know what happened? She was like, "Oh, it's a diuretic." I was like. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that. If there was a label on this that that would be on it. That would it would be it'd say it. It's a diuretic. I said, Aubrey, what if I went on a jog as soon as I drank? Yeah. It? Because in my mind, that's how refreshing it was. Like I wanted to immediately go on a jog, and she was like, Oh, I didn't really think about that. I was like, Yeah, you know, tell me, tell me when you're gonna give me <laughs> a beverage me going to evacuate my bowels. Like I'd like to know that. Like that's something that like you know in marriage, like marriage, <laughs> is something that is 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 tender and sweet and trusting, and I just. After that, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust you. She gives me on the whole thing. <laughs> you know, I, I imagined saying. you uh, like climbing up into your treehouse, you know, in the evening after drinking that, climbing under a blanket, reading a ghost story, and then be like, "Oop, got a poop." <laughs> <laughs> no, you had to jump out. No time for the ladder. Well, I mean, <laughs> foods have all these like potential warnings of. Now my phone's ringing. <laughs> what, did he? He did he say that before that actually happened? That was weird. Is, I was gonna say, is that 3D? Yeah, the phone's the phone is ringing in 3D. Um, <laughs> no, foods have like all these potential warning labels. Like the, you know, if if you're pregnant, pregnant, this might happen. Like, what about actual useful labels? Like, this will give you diarrhea. Like, there is. Like, is it, <laughs> prepare yourself. This is guaranteed. Do not wear white pants. Do not go jogging. Do not take a boat trip because you are going to be in trouble if you drink this. Yeah. And if you are pregnant, don't drink this concoction because I think, oh. I, I, I think he's going to clean you out big time. Um, I, like I'm just saying, like, be careful. Like, expecting mothers, like, I don't, you know, uh, I don't I don't know what, how you feel about either side of that debate, but uh, yeah, avoid this drink. It's really refreshing, though. That's the problem with it. It's, imagine the most delicious beverage drinks. you can. <laughs> well then, you'll be fine. You okay. you will be perfectly keep, fine. <laughs> I'll keep drinking my yeah. Never mind. I don't know where I'm going with that. It, it, it might as well be a liquid slider. You know, like that's yeah, that's kind of good. Like, you know, Jordan just mentioned White yeah. Castle. I'm like, yeah, that's like the closest thing in terms of out, outside of actual like pills that are supposed to give you diarrhea. <laughs> this is like the, the the most extreme example other than White Castle. So I miss White Castle. God, someone send me White Castle. Somebody, I don't, well, Jordan. Actually, did we talk about that? I think that would probably hold on a a, a trip over the pond. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. A whole would. Cargo plane full of sliders. Actually, the, yeah. yeah. The, the... <laughs> Get these motherfucking sliders off my motherfucking plane. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, Someone what a horror it. movie that would be! Like the sliders, and <laughs> they're just coming out of the compartments and everything, and just trying to climb into people's mouths, and they're like, "No, you're gonna make me poop." So the, yeah, the uh, the entire flight, the only food is sliders, and the only drink is whatever drink Audrey would <laughs> In 3D. Hello? Uh, would you like a, a beverage? Yeah, I'd love it. I'd love. I'd love it. Oh, this is this is real refreshing. You're gonna love it. Oh, here's a slider. <laughs> I hope you're okay. <laughs> That would be a horrible plane ride. Oh my gosh. So, who played the shittiest game? So I can segue into that. Oh man, <laughs> no, no, I don't think I played any <laughs> no, games. Don't want to set up that way. That'd be a great segue, though. Yeah. Oh good. man, now I've tainted whatever game we're going to talk about. So, Aaron, let's talk about Pokemon. God damn it! <laughs> I'll catch them all. Sully and my come, Pokemon. Come with me, and we'll do it all. Cause we're best friends with animals. Boop boom boom. Put them in <laughs> balls, and then go and play and fight animals too. Gotta catch them all. I don't really like Pokemon, but. <laughs> I like it. it almost got away from me, but then you reeled it back in. Yeah, I really, I forgot. Put, I used to know that. <laughs> I mean, that's what the game's about, right? Animals yeah, put them in balls and go in places. 
<laughs> doing taxes and getting your oil changed. Yeah, so uh, my journey through Pokemon continued over the weekend. It, it involved none of what Ethan sang about. <laughs> but, yeah, I, you didn't I go took... places but animals and balls? Nope. <laughs> none of that. Mm-hmm. I, I did file taxes and get an oil change. <laughs> Went to the dentist. <laughs> No, so I beat all the gym leaders over the weekend, and I'm at the Elite Four because that all that Pokemon never changes. I don't know what, yeah. Except for when it does. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Pokemon. Pokemon never changes. <laughs> so, like, like, the whole crux of the game is that you want to get better and better, catch all the Pokemon, so, level them up, beat just, gym leaders. I, whenever you say gym leaders, I just picture, like, PE teachers. Like that's Those are, like, yeah, the like, like, local Pokemon champions. <laughs> I'm talking about like local managers of a gold's gym. You go from town to town just beating the shit out of them. With, and then you own the franchise. Animals. Hey Dale, get me get my Pokemon out. It's time to beat this little chump. Get him. Get my Oxidor. Get in the ring, get him. I'm gonna hit this treadmill. Yeah, so uh no, so a gym leader is they, they tend to spe- um, specialize in a particular type of Pokemon, like Psychic or Rock, and they have a bunch of weakling followers that also do the same, and you pretty much stroll in there, beat everyone, they give you good sagely life advice, <laughs> they give you a badge, like a, like the Boy Scouts or Something's something. It's like a friendly competition. Hmm. It is. Know. Everyone's yeah. really nice, except for you know the bad guys of the game, Oh, which they the never bad... make any sense. What makes the bad guys bad in Pokemon? They tend to have these, like, motives that are really selfish. Like, we want to have all the Pokemon to ourselves, or oh. we want to destroy the world. <laughs> Only I can catch them all. <laughs> you know, it, it ranges from, you know, greed to self-destruction. Oh, man. That old spectrum. This is the most and I've so, ever learned about Pokemon. I'm not lying to you right now. I, this is... <laughs> I needed this 101. You're it never makes language. any sense. It doesn't make any sense that there's a bunch of, like, bad dudes. They're all dressed the, the same. Dude? But the only thing they'll ever do is Pokemon battle you. The, like you think these guys have guns and knives and just like murder all these kids. They were routinely beaten by kids because they adhere to the rules of a Pokemon battle. <laughs> and it blows my mind. I sit there and I'm beating them. And I'm like, at any moment, could they just whip out a gun and like just shoot me right there? And their plan would go through foolproof. <laughs> So, 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 you're, so you're saying there's there's a certain ethics to Pokemon yeah. battling, and and everyone is constrained by these ethics, regardless yeah. of you know they're oh well. That's... So we're talking about like bad bad, like they're not bad bad. They're more they're funny bad. They're not bad. super bad. They're funny bad. They're goof bad. Goof, goof bad. bad. All right. <laughs> goof bad. I explain that. So Pokemon don't have guns, right? No, not yet. We'll get there. <laughs> not yet. Wait a second. Wait a second. We'll make Americans out of them yet. Yeah. <laughs> Guns for everyone. Pikachu <laughs> holding his gun sideways. It's going to happen, <laughs> sir. Oh, man. And he'll be your best friend forever. But you still rolling strong with this? Is it still... You still addicted at this point? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rolling strong? <laughs> rolling are you, strong. Did you get a bunch of your homies together <laughs> in your low rider? Hey, guys, get those Pokeballs. Let's get it. Let's get a move on. I've been hanging out with a bunch of gym leaders. That's how they talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they talk. Yeah, I, I'm still playing it. I'm I'm getting to the breeding. I've got like ten Eevees. I'm I'm going nuts. But yeah, I'll be I'll beat the game. <laughs> I'm laying on. Uh so yeah, you put put your Pokemon in the daycare center. To this day, like they introduced daycare centers maybe in the second generation of Pokemon, gold and silver. To this day, people are still surprised to find Pokemon carrying eggs that have baby versions of themselves in them. Like, no one understands. We have scientists. There are damn scientists in Pokemon, and they have yet to figure out how they breed. They just appear. We'll watch, we catch them, we can make them battle. Where the hell do they come from? How do they multiply? No one knows. As long as they keep multiplying, we don't care. As long as they keep multiplying and we can adhere to our Pokemon battles, that's probably how you become a real man in Pokemon, too. Like... You know, a kid's, like, walking down the street, and a bully shoves him over, and he's like, you ever Pokemon battle before? And the kid starts crying because he hasn't. <laughs> he's like, I'm not a man yet. How is the Pokemon... Can you, po- can you eat Pokemon? What's that? That should can make you, you bad. Pokemon? Shouldn't that be, like, the I bad think, guy? Uh, I think so. They, they don't talk <laughs> about it, but I think so. 
But are there real animals in the world of Pokemon, or is it just there, Pokemon? It, there are birds. Like they're all modeled after like real human things. So there are birds and cows. Mm-hmm. And I think at one point they talked about like, there's a bull called Tauros, and I'm sh- pretty sure at one point someone mentioned a steak. So you know they're mm-hmm. they're catching them oh, and they're steak. becoming friends with them and they're eating them. Put some a one. As long as you don't name them, that's bull. fine. Yeah, don't <laughs> like Rick said. Yeah. Um, don't give them names. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, what? how did this Pokemon society evolve to the point where this is how life and death struggles are solved, is by fighting with these animals? There's, There's no other weapon. Case. Are there any other weapons in the world? Are there? Is there any other way to, like, cause harm? Like, can you, like, economically destroy a, another country? <laughs> or is this literally the only way to solve... Conflict from just like, um, someone stole your lunch to, I'm gonna blow up the world. Like this, this is the only way. I don't know if anyone would ever steal your lunch. They'd probably get their Pokemon to do it. They'd Pokemon <laughs> value you for your lunch money. <laughs> but I mean, there's bookcases everywhere, and you can't read them, so you can't learn the history of Pokemon. Like, how did people deal with life with that? Like before Pokemon, yeah. were, like the balls could didn't just exist. Someone and is made this the, the balls. apex of the society, or. Like, can we evolve beyond using these creatures to solve our problems? I, I, I don't know if, like, are, are, are we as a society behind the world of Pokemon, or are we ahead of it? I can't, I can't really I decide. Oh, that's interesting. So is it the future? Or is it, like, yeah, they put okay. away weapons, and they have resolved, this is the, like, most peaceful way we can solve all of <laughs> the problems. most peaceful I think I, it really sounds scary to me to imagine you're sleeping soundly in your bed and some dude just throws a pokeball through your window <laughs> to rob you, and then like the biggest motherfucker just pops out of that and burns your house down. <laughs> Can now wait a minute? Can Pokemon kill humans? Like if if like let's say the Pokemon loses it in battle, it's like oh, I'm killing Pikachu and I can't control my and the other guy's like oh my ball's all broken. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it smashed right out. <laughs> you can run out. Like can the theoretically, Pokemon... yeah. <laughs> theoretically, I think Pokemon should be murdered. Like they're not robots. I don't think there's any rule to like they have to obey these rules. I, I'm pretty like, sure bullshit. Every murder, every human murder by a Pokemon in that universe, the 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 investigator of that crime always it always there's always the line with my 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 Pokeball broke. Like that is always. <laughs> That is a key factor. I lost control of my balls, and... <laughs> I hate when that happens. I feel like this is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Been a very they, like, dust the Pokemon. Pokeball. They dust the Pokeball for Prince to find out who who touched this last. Do you, do you think Pokemon is actually, f- like, the future of Fallout? Like, maybe there's, like, a I'm canon sure. that connects all of these games? You know, like, like Fallout is, is a game based entirely on man's inability to control his 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 super weapons and so the world gets destroyed but in fallout you see that you start to rebuild and stuff do you think pokemon comes like 200 years later like that whole time like they're just tweaking little things like I, oh we've got to find a better solution i, I think they achieved like a utopia and then got bored and this was the next thing that happened like okay we're not going to hurt each other directly we're going to use animals to hurt each other i think it was like mm, it's a okay. step down from a utopia that's my theory <laughs> and that's why we don't name them <laughs> but they so is every Pikachu Pikachu? Yes. Every Pikachu in the wild is Pikachu. But if you give it a name, a of animal. you're just okay. asking to get your heart broken. Otherwise, when he talks, he just sounds like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde. <laughs> Richard. 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 <laughs> All Montgomery. Right. <laughs> Let's go to one of Ethan's game. What what you got? Um, geez. Well, I think we can kind of co-op on this one. Um, I played Eldritch uh, mm-hmm. yesterday, and then I streamed quite a bit today. Uh, it is a, a roguelike, uh, like roguelike, like. Um, it is a first-person stealth action exploration game. I think all is the best way I can words describe are it. True. All, all of all of these words are true. Um, it is it is based in a Lovecraftian type universe, um, and 
it has, it, you know, when you first saw it, look at it, it looks as if it's kind of like a, it looks Minecraft just because it, it's simple, it's blocks, it, boom, it, it looks like Minecraft. I hate comparing everything to Minecraft, but holy cow, I mean, what other games look like that? So, um, but in the game, you're kind of tasked with navigating these levels, and they're multi-tiered levels, and along the way, you, there's these, you know, uh, Lovecraftian monsters walking around. Uh, you can find items, but your goal is to find these spirit balls, uh, pokey balls, if you will, oh. um, <laughs> for the Lovecraftian elder gods. I think I, I'm getting the impression of that. And um, it's it's a very very interesting game. I think I'm playing it completely wrong though. Like I'm playing the game. In the game, you can duck and be stealthy and you can sneak up on guys but I'm playing it like Skyrim in the in the sense that I'm like really really taking my time like I'm yeah. really like oh so like playing in the perfect and I think it's a quick game like I think yeah. you're supposed to play it with a little bit more speed um which is you know because you know at, at, while I'm play, playing the game like, like it's it's a cool game it's really interesting but I'm kind of like oh man the pace is kind of yeah uh, I am um, yeah so I did a game curious video that's up real quick review and I feel better knowing that you're taking your time because I didn't know if it was just the result of me live streaming and trying to like just get to get to know the game with with our audience that I played it mm-hmm. so methodically, or if it's I think that's also how I just approach roguelikes. It's like yeah, until I understand you know what's random, what what I can use, what I can't use, what's going to hurt me, what I need to do. Like I I just kind of. Go go through at a very deliberate pace, and then I cut the I wrap the game curious video, and then we kept playing for another thirty five minutes, and I just kind of ran around like an idiot for twenty five minutes. One had a lot more fun. Two learned a lot more about what other potential items are in the world, what you should and shouldn't do, and then um, you know as my pace picked up, I started to enjoy the game a lot more. I still yeah yeah I still ultimately um. I, d- I don't know what's supposed to pull you in because it, it you know it, it it feels very well it feels like the f- foundation for a really great game but there's no big mm-hmm. hook to it there's no like yeah there's no there's no highs to the game for me and mm-hmm. uh, while I I think it was the I also played Delver recently but but of the I really want a good first person roguelike and this is definitely the best one that I've played but it's still it's missing a little bit of the entertainment fun factor and it's much more. You know, much more of an exploration game than an action game, and that kind of surprised me. Mm-hmm. It needs some gravy. I mean, that that's kind of like mm. I was thinking. It now is it is it? It's not an early access game. It, nope. It's it's a full release at this point, mm-hmm. and to me, it felt as if there was more to be added to it, and maybe that might be something in the future. But that's kind of the impression I got. I was okay. Like it, it's it's a good like it felt good for a beta. It's real tight. Like the game itself is mm-hmm. tight. The mechanics are tight. The controls are tight. Much tighter than many many games. And I didn't actually expect it to function like that. But um, everything feels a little like the levels feel a little bit too almost too lightly populated for my my taste. And, and the levels themselves aren't entirely interesting, which isn't a big deal because it. it I think you're supposed to look at the levels as more of a puzzle as opposed to just like you're not trying to get like look at cool things and be interested in that kind of stuff. But still, to me, it leaves a little bit to be um, a bit to be to be desired in terms of that. Now, what I was thinking is, okay, maybe there's a co-op aspect of it, which I think would make that cool. You know, mm-hmm. flood the, those levels with a- a- enemies, bring a buddy in there. I think you'd have a lot more fun. Also, I think it needs a time limit. Yeah. That's no. another thing, because I feel like you could just look there around no and get all the... There was no sense of urgency. No, no, not at all. Um, now, did you make it to the second level? There's there's, there's three books, and each book has a different set of levels. I didn't get through the um, first book. I got to the... So I, I was kind of breaking it down. Like, you get to the first stage, it's got three levels to it, like vertically, which mm-hmm. that was the thing I really liked. The fact that you're having to... If you want to explore um, every level, you've got to go up and down in between the three levels to to get to every corner um, if you're not exploding walls, which is m- even more fun. Um, yeah. So I got through the first section, and I got to the... I think I made it through the second exit once, but that's a, that's the deepest I got. So how, how deep oh, okay. does that first world go? Is, is it like three or four? Yeah, I, I think it's three or four full stages, so it's like 12 levels in, in that. And... Um, I, I thought the first stage wasn't super difficult. Like mm-hmm. when I died, it was because I made I you know, was, silly mistakes. I thought it was welcoming. Like I thought that that like yeah yeah yeah. It did need to ramp up, but it was it. 
I like the pace initially. Yeah, and and few roguelikes are quite as welcoming. Right. Um, but the second stage is pretty tough. It it, it you you kind of like whoa whoa what's going on here? So I have new enemies and that kind of stuff too Was that as fun? well. And, and I think. Um, it was because the enemies were a little bit different and some of them just really like caught me off guard. Like at one point there's a statue just sitting there and then you turn around and when you turn back, like you could hear something and you turn back and the statue has moved a little bit. Like oh, those kind of fuck with your head type <laughs> stuff. Um, anyone who's familiar with the SCP files, uh, will know of, uh, I forget what number it is, but this, the statue that you always have to be looking at or else it'll come and, and kill you. But, Whoa. um, it was um, th- that was cool, but again, the levels themselves still looked like I don't know what more obstacles are going to get at, get at you. And again, when I play roguelikes, like I don't, I'm not ever used to being welcomed. I don't feel like I feel like I'm always on the edge. And, and at one point, I had like 20 bullets and all this kind of stuff. So I think maybe there's some difficulty tweaking that can be done. Uh, I think the levels can definitely be more populated. Um, and I don't know. I I, I want to keep following this game. I, I'm not like again. We we talked earlier today, and Justin was like, you know. Is it thumbs up, thumbs down? I said thumbs sideways, but like in a positive way. Like it's moving up. Like it mm-hmm. wants to move up, but it's still, you know, to be objective. Um, you know, I, I would I recommend it to someone. Like, uh, I mean, you got to really like roguelikes, and you really, I don't know. It'd be tough to recommend it at this point. It really would. Yeah, just yeah. That's weird that in these string of early access games that we've played, it it kind of feels like one of those. And that yet your foundation yeah. is there, so you're adding more yeah. stuff, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're not. Well, okay. <laughs> that's uh, I guess yeah. it's fine, but um, well, it makes me feel bad because the heart's there. I mean, I mean, yeah. definitely like they. It, it's a tightly. It, again, it comes down to it. Like a lot of people say, oh, if you've got tight mechanics, you're good, and that's not always true, especially nowadays when you have so much competition. And and this is one of those games that they need a little bit more than that. You know, just having great gameplay or good gameplay isn't isn't going to be enough if if visually you're not. You know, enticed. You know what I mean. But if I think I'm curious if it's a moddable game. Yeah, mm-hmm. could be. I'm, like, if you could add mods to this game, like, I wonder if that could like alleviate some of these issues that are brought up, like, too lightly populated or not an yeah. emergency. Crazy yeah. enemy mode. That, I, I was gonna <laughs> say it, it definitely. There's, I mean, there's definitely. I think it'd be easy to implement a couple things, and it would just... I think it'd be a really, really popular game. At this point, it needs a little bit more. It just needs a little bit more, and that's okay. That's perfectly okay. So, um, I think my video is about 35 minutes long, so I can say that throughout the inter- entire 35 minutes, I was still laughing every time I killed an enemy because they made such dumb noises, and they were adorable. <laughs> yeah. And also just the fact that I was stabbing most of them in the face, and they were just kind of... They kind of pop around the corner, and they're like, a bull? And then you just <laughs> stab. Well, they they, they sound it's so they're so melancholy. It's yeah. a, they sigh the whole time, and and I, you just hear them like, "Oh, I wish I wasn't here." Like they, they don't say that, but you're kind of like, "Oh, I yeah. don't want to be yeah. here." Let's, I felt I was invading elsewhere. their world, and they're like, "Yeah." I mean, I, I, I mean, I gotta defend this place, but man, you're gonna make me walk across this room to get in your face. Yeah, and you. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna try. I'll throw a fireball. Ah, uh, no, I'm just gonna turn. Let's just sneak up on me. Yeah. <laughs> Beware that the shop keeps have fireballs. I learned that one at the. Oh man, those. Yeah, but I. So what, I, I saw in your video that you just open up a door and just start shooting them. Like at first, I went in there thinking peacefully, but then I thought, remembering my time with. Um, the dark corners of the earth, uh, which it, it, it you juxtapose those two games. I mean, that's that that's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> the fishmen from that game are much cuter in this game. And I saw that shopkeeper. I was like, and I remembered, I remembered, hey, don't let those cute graphics, you know, fool you because these are the guys that that wanted to kill you in, in you know back in the early 1900s. So just just be cautious. <laughs> and uh, so I just I, I was like, you know what? Throw caution in the wind, and I didn't know how the how the dynamite functioned at this time. Yeah. So I threw I, I set the dynamite by the guy, and I, I ran out, and it he, it blew up, and it blew the floor out from underneath him. I was like, oh, you actually use the dynamite as a navigational tool. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, but he was pissed. He was not happy at all. <laughs> so. Um, um, yeah. Favorite, let's learn. like either special abilities or, um, I think they're like little tokens or badges you pick up. Anything stand out? Um, you know, you find a teleport ability at one point uh, that you basically point the... It's like the blink almost in Dishonored. You you point it and you set a, a teleport location and you can teleport there. Um, that was pretty cool. And that and I tend, tended to stick with a knife 
um, and then always had some dynamite with me. I, I used to have the gun, but you know, it, it, until you get to the second world, you almost the gun is you know, I don't know, maybe not as important as is some dynamite yeah, to kind of eyeballs take, show up really. Those eyeballs are yeah, they can be a pain in the ass. But uh, have you did you fight the blobs? The giant the blobs, blobs that can't no. be killed. No. Oh no. Oh. Ooh, I do no, have a man. funny teleport I, story because the oh. I, I got the teleport and I was playing around with it, jumping around, jumping around. And I must have got it on like the first level of the first stage, and then you know I I work my way down to the second or third level and like near the exit and um and I hadn't really been using the teleport and then I was going to try to use it and and so the way it works is you you for the first time you tap the right mouse button and it sets the point and if you want to move that point you've got to hold the mouse the right mouse button and then you can move it to wherever you're looking. Well, apparently I had I had had the point set somewhere on the first level, and I went to move the point, and I actually tapped the button. So I went from the very bottom of the stage to up to the very top again, and it was really annoying. Oh, <laughs> so I just walked it back really to the beginning. Um, and then right towards the end of the um, uh, the stream, we found some destruction badge that granted your gun the ability to to shoot through walls and basically explode blocks. So I was able to basically dig shortcuts through the walls and oh, that's cool. So that was wow. that was pretty awesome. Um, that is awesome. And then um, I found a one of the statues gave me a knock ability, which um, allowed you to knock on a wall to distract an enemy or knock on a door to unlock it. And it was actually pretty rel- relatively cheap to use. So that I was pretty. Those <laughs> abilities were pretty awesome. So you're like the Fonzie of doors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> knocking those locks right off. Uh, my big game last week uh, was The Wolf Among Us, and so that's Telltale. Tell I can never say it when I want to say it. Telltale's uh, next game, uh, based on a comic book series that I have not read. Um, did you ever get into the Fables? Either one of you, Fables. I heard. I, I always hear really good things about them. Did you mm-hmm. know about it before Telltale was doing this? Okay. Um, yeah. But. Modern day fairy tale creatures, well, uh, 1980s. <laughs> it takes place in the 1980s where uh, fairy tale creatures live alongside us in Brooklyn. And you're the big bad wolf who's a cop and investigating some uh, some murders of some other f- fairy tale creatures. And um, that basically becomes a detective story after that. And I, wow, I, I loved it. I said at the end of the stream, had a bigger initial impact to me than the first Walking Dead episode did. Um, mm, from, wow. just from like a, a fun factor, enjoyability of the story, like it was just the story was t- told really, really well. Uh, the dialogue was just awesome throughout. It was completely entertaining. And I actually felt more free playing this game uh, because I didn't know the rules of the world. Like, and it even starting The Walking Dead and not knowing where it was going, I know what you need to watch out for in, in, um, in a land filled with zombies. Like you start to, you know, figure out who you're going to join up with and protect your, protect your group. And you know that the strife's going to come from other people. So I kind of knew the boundaries there, but this one I didn't know. And I didn't give a fuck. So I just reacted along with this, with the sheriff and, um, had a lot of, had a lot of fun with it. And the story takes some, uh, goes in some interesting directions. And, um, you know, it, it just was, it was, a lot more polished than I expected. I didn't tell telltale was really on it with this one. And mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is, like it. it, it is still a telltale game. It's an adventure game, but man, it was so easy to just sit and play through that in one sitting too. It was great. Mm. Wow. That's cool. You got to talk about your new best friend, my new best friend. Oh, which, Oh, <laughs> oh God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of feel bad. Um, so I, I posted a video of this, you know, one of our, you know, we kind of always make jokes that nothing is original or new on the internet. And every now and then, Uh. you know, we, over the course of doing our hundred plus podcasts, we think we come up with, um, at least a few unique ideas. And one of my historical favorites is Ethan, we were looking to come up with a, uh, a term for shirtless men whenever you would like to look them up on the internet. Um, but not, you know, not, not naked men, just shirtless men. And just shirtless men. Yeah. And, uh, and off the cuff, you, de- you, 
you threw out the word buffkins and it was perfect and we've 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 been fondly attached to the term ever since well it turns out in fables which i don't know how long the comic's been around there's a goddamn monkey from oz named buffkin and i met him on the stream <laughs> and i was just i was beside myself and but the best part of it was like i'm sitting there just like how the fuck did this happen like this 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 is our name how i i can't believe this and then it finally comes to the character talking to my character. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, fuck you, Buffkin. And that and fuck off. That was, was great. One of the options that I could say to him. <laughs> so my character told Buffkin to fuck, fuck off. But It was so appropriate. Uh, man, I, I, I really, I thought, you know, of all the things that we have done, we have created in, in the, the four plus years we've been doing this, Buffkin's was one of the ones that really had a special place for me and when you sent me that video at first i laughed and then my heart sank and i was like oh that's it that was it that was the last it that was the last original thing on the internet yeah. like yeah. literally <laughs> us trying to find a term for searching for shirtless men and calling it buffkins was the last original thing everything's been done everybody yeah. uh, you had to do homages or satire for the rest of your damn life because it's done this is postmodernism at its worst <laughs> holy shit but I, I i gotta look back to see when that character was created like because there's i mean there's no way in like an off chance that we've heard the the word before, but it was just that was so mm. bizarre. That was so bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aaron, I, um. <laughs> Aaron, did you watch the whole thing? I watched most of it, yeah. but towards the end, uh, I guess it's not really spoiling. Like you went to a bar or something. That's the last bit I saw of it. I stepped out. Do so you think you'll? But yeah, I might have to pick it up now. I didn't see the end, so and like there there are the branching paths to it, so I can pretty much do everything that you didn't do. And it, I do think it's a game worth checking out, and I was interested before, but waited for you to play it. But yeah, Telltale was like really on it. It was funny. It was entertaining. Like the action of it. Like I guess where Walking Dead was suspenseful, and that you know there's zombies all over the place, and you never know when they're gonna pop out or try to bite you or who they might murder this time. This one was just kind of interesting in trying to solve that murder. And since I guess none of us have actually read Fables, you know, it was a a nice introduction to this idea of, you know, all these fa- fairy tale characters living against, you know, amongst us Mondays <laughs> yeah. mm. and murdering each other, being dicks, and like I, Toad. And I, Toad's d- such a dick. Doing detective work just fits so well with with the adventure game design. Like you just, mm-hmm. the, the puzzles yeah. were interwoven with the story so so well. Just They just, everything felt natural. Like you're just, I'm at the, I'm at a crime scene or... Something's going on here, so I gotta you know ask a lot of questions and get to the bottom of this. Um, uh, a, a little less forced, I would say, than some of the Walking Dead stuff. But well, I not take yeah. anything away from the Walking Dead because I feel like th- this is just the stepping stone there, and it makes me really curious to see one how this this series wraps up and how quickly they get their episodes out, but also what they're gonna do with the Walking Dead um, mm-hmm. season two. Because yeah, that season two. I mean, I, I mean, I I did. I expected them. I expected Walking Dead to almost be their kind of anomaly with, you know, they hadn't quite gotten their their games together. They were they were missing the mark almost uh, yeah. for a couple games in a row before The Walking Dead. So it was like, which which telltale is this going to be? And, yeah, it's they're stepping up their game still. So Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah I was going to say, I, I, I made a, a big fuss about The Walking Dead and earlier, you know, before it had come out just because, you know, of Jurassic Park and having high hopes for that game, and it just fallen pretty flat. Um, but I think there's a groove, you know, you had to get into, and I'm just, I'll be curious to see, though, this, how these games play out if they're going to be able to maintain, like, getting strong stories, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to, I wonder if, what the next franchise is that they're going to be getting, because I don't know if these would lend themselves, I don't know, I wonder if it would lend themselves to, like, a completely original story. I mean, I, I, I'm curious, you know, about, Mm-hmm. If people would still have that, because obviously, you know, people are going to play this that are a fan of, of Walking Dead, um, like that, how that game played out, but also maybe fans of, of Fable. Um, and I, obviously, people that like the Walking Dead game liked it because of the Walking Dead. I mean, that's why I got into it. Like, I don't, I don't think I'd be interested in this one as much because it, it doesn't have that hook for me, you know, at that point. Mm-hmm. So, but, it, but I'm happy that they did okay with it. I was kind of expecting, like, uh, this is when. Everyone's get you know the air is going to be let out of the tire you know yeah. and, and everyone's going to be like oh okay it worked with Walking Dead because Walking Dead was popular yeah. but yeah. hey why not yeah I mean I just I feel oh man it's it's not going to get the attention that, that the Walking Dead got because of that but but they're doing a stellar job of what they're working with so 
That was that was a, I mean, shit. I put the game off for a week and I heard only great things about it, but it still exceeded my expectations. So I was writing, yeah, mine too, writing a bit of a high there. Um, so I'm actually cutting together um, every other day this week. You're gonna see the rest of my playthrough of that episode. Um, I think it's. I think it's going to be five episodes total, but I'm going to put those up on the YouTube page in uh, 20 or 30 minute chunks, and we'll see if I come back to that for episode two. Hopefully I can keep that up, but like I said, that was in one sitting. felt pretty natural, and if you guys want to check that out, you can um, check it out in, in small bits so you don't get spoilers if you end up liking the game. So, um, I also want to give a shout-out to... I, I After I played Eldritch last night, I played um, kind of the indie darling of last week was the Stanley Parable, and I don't want to spoil this game, mm. um, but holy shit was this game entertaining. <laughs> it, mm. um, you play as Stanley, who works in an office, he's employee number 400 whatever, and all he does is push buttons because he is told to push these buttons, and that is his job. And you show up to the office, and nobody's there, and that's where the game starts. And when you play it, it's different every time, um, and it is just incredibly entertaining. It is, it, like I said, people, I'm glad people have been hesitant to describe it, and um, I streamed a, um, about 25 minutes of it, but I feel like, I guess there's a demo out there, and if you are curious about the game, the demo even kind of pokes fun at itself, so I would encourage you to try the demo then rather than even watching anything. But this is, um, uh, it, this is kind of one of those games where its sense of humor will, will either just knock it out of the park for you, or you won't like it at all. So, um, but I, I think if you're if you're a gamer at all, I think it'll appeal to you. Like as far as just the situations you've played through in games, it it is uh, it. It was. It's awesome. <laughs> it is. I was. I had a lot. Does of fun. it? <laughs> does it have the? Uh, and, and I know they're not. Probably this is probably isn't even the best comparison, but just off the top of my head, like kind of the, the same reaction you get from Elevator Source, in, in the sense mm -hmm. that there's something new happening. You're kind of in the same sort of environment, but something different happens each time you. It's got more narrative. Come than, into it. It's got more narrative than Elevator Source. Um. Yeah, but yeah, okay. it's along. Well, that's it, pretty. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's along those lines though, as far as that experience. Like, um, you're more involved in what's happening versus, you know, oh, okay. elevator. You just ride. You just ride the elevator, and stuff happens. You're actually you're doing stuff in this game. You're gotcha. You're affecting what's what's happening. So, gotcha, um, gotcha. And holy shit, is it funny? Um, and then I did finish a game. Just. Throwing out that milestone. Hey, oh boy! Tomb Raider. What? Whoa! Whoa! Tomb Raider went down. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Larry Croft. Okay. So I was Larry riding Croft. quite a bit of, bit of a high into Larry's ending there, and uh, you know it 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 didn't have the like epic climax that it felt like it was really building to, but it was still a, a great game. So um, yeah. that that game, I feel uh -oh. like it. Um, you know, it's it's not Tomb Raider. It's Survival Woman. And it's awesome as survival woman, <laughs> and it um, I think it kind of got an unfair shake of people like really coming down on it for the wrong stuff, like being critical about um, you know, its its history and what it was, you know, some of the situations that that Laura was in, but you know, just really really well paced game, fun action, stories pretty damn entertaining, especially like considering. Um, considering the setup, it, it, it just, uh, it's one of my, one of my favorite games of the year. I'm not, you know, I still, I, I kind of have my action games that I really like from this year and it, it's not over the top, but it's, I'm really glad I played this game and I would encourage a lot of people to, to do the same. So cool. Yeah. Uh, same here. Uh, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at my ball on it. It's, it's there. I've got it. I just need to get into it. Did you watch my turret video from last week? Mm -mm. If you haven't, I don't want you to, but there, it's kind of a moment of it, it epitomized my experience experience with the game. So, um, okay. And um, then I I also at the end of that end of that stream I didn't really have much else to play. And I ended up playing a bunch of Jamestown off of my yeah. my Bullet Hell um, games last week, and had never really got into the into the details of that game. I've just kind of played it until it told me to stop because it has that whole 
play through the first three levels. And if you want to unlock the fourth level, you're going to have to play it on a harder difficulty. And I've just never done that. But just like actually going yeah, through the yeah. grind and I finally understood what vaunting is and how that affects your score and helps you level up to get more stuff. And that game is mm-hmm. that game is really well done. Like yeah. a lot of people yeah, have said is. that, but holy shit, great job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, it's a really good shmup. Yeah. I, I I love love a good shmup. It's it's tough to not do a good shmup, but <laughs> it's it, every time you say it. But but you know like it's it's tough to do a good really good one too you know what I mean like there's there's a lot of those in betweens but that one's a good one I like it makes me smile I want to play with somebody though me too yeah play so lonely we might do that I might I bet I bet that shows up during the charity marathon it's gonna be a lot of um a lot of local co op games and online co op games for the charity marathon so we're still going through that Mm -hmm. list but um and then finally I want to I want to lead into your Skyrim discussion a little bit, Ethan, but, um, so I upgraded at Windows 8.1 last week. Um, luckily I put it off until after podcasting because I didn't want to mess with it there, but yeah, that upgrade last week messed with a lot of my great games and I could not play Skyrim this weekend. And I was just, I was pumped up to continue that stream to continue my, um, my business arrangement with Lydia and, and, uh, explore the world, but it was just stuttering like hell. Um, there was a graphic driver update earlier this week that that fixed it on my machine, so all my games are running um, running pretty pretty well, including Pinball FX2, which was also having problems. But yeah, if you've got Windows 8.1 and your games are acting weird, um, perhaps uh, the other glitch I had was that uh, 3D the the 3D glasses view was turned on by default for all of my games for a little bit. So that was I really thought something was fucked up on my computer, and uh, it was all false alarms. So get your driver updates. And it sh- things should be better this week, but it's big 3D is trying to get get up in all of our stuff, yeah, even if we 3D. don't want. It. <laughs> Hold us down. <laughs> well, what have you 3D been? Lydia. What have you been doing in Skyrim? Oh man, like like Skyrim is my cozy. It's w- winter, f- late fall game, and like now I feel like I felt dirty playing it during the summertime, even though I played a lot of it. Um, right now, I'm just I feel comfortable. I put a nice blanket around me. A little bit of cocoa, um, it just it just feeling good. But right now, I've I've kind of decided like I need to just discover everything that Skyrim has to offer. Oh, shit. I, I just need oh, to shit. just like, <laughs> dig into it, like like and not every single day, but get in there, chip yeah. away, you know, get all the quests done. I've gotten I've gotten over the fact that I'm there's a few quest lines that you you got to do bad stuff. You got to do things that me. Uh, my character usually would not do. My character is a pretty good guy, even though I have done, I guess, all the Dark Brotherhood quest lines. But in my mind, like I was like a tortured soul that had to do it, and so I'm kind of playing that idea too. Like, oh, I have no choice to do this. So I'm gonna kind of get over the fact that you know, like I'm gonna have to steal, I'm gonna have to be a thief, um, and I'm gonna have to kill some people that may not deserve it, and so I can see everything um, because. It's amazing still to this day, and I'm about 175 hours into it, I still keep finding new things. And um, I've noticed a lot of Skyrim hate and as of late. And maybe it's just because, you know, I don't, I've got Skyrim love in my heart right now. But, like, when people complain about this game, and again, what what is it, two years later now it came out? Yeah, two years three, later now. Three. Yeah. Like, yeah. Th- is it three now? Shit. Three. So. The hate for this game is so irrational and is not even funny, and it makes me so sad. Um, it's it's like oh that get oh, these games so I hate Skyrim. And there was there was a game that's coming out called Lichdom, and everyone's like oh Skyrim with CryEngine. No, that's not it at all. That game's <laughs> linear. Skyrim gives you the opportunity to like live in a world. There's a difference between walking down a path. I don't care how beautiful the game is. Skyrim's not the most beautiful game, though. If you mod it, it can look great. But the idea that you can just kind of do whatever you want and explore and just keep finding new stuff is awesome. And I just, I keep, like, I love Bethesda RPGs. I love the shitty aspect of them. I love the (laughs) bugs. I love, you know, at one moment, one of my my allies will just fly into the sky and never be seen again. Like, I like that kind of stuff. Um... And and at this point, I, I just I don't know. It's tough to get away from that. I'm kind of glad that I have the Skyrim because it always kind of brings me back into that you know that 
that, that's a game that I, I put time into, and I'm like a Minecraft where sometimes I feel like I'm playing Minecraft and I'm spending a lot of time on it, but like I haven't really done a lot. Like I've collected a bunch of things, but I haven't done a lot. Skyrim kind of satiates me a little bit more in terms of, you know, like I'm spending a lot of time on quests or whatever, but, you know, I actually get some sort of conclusion to it. And uh, I'm loving it, man. I'm 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 still digging that game, and, and that that's that that says a lot. That says a lot. My heart's so so open for Skyrim. I love you. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> every like I took a little bit of a break there, but every time I go back to that game, I get super pumped up again. Half of that is because Shadowmere, but we've talked about how awesome that horse is. And um, yeah, Shadowmere got his ass kicked though by a, 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 a frost troll actually today. I was actually I was gonna say that something like I I. And I don't know what I was thinking, and maybe this is me putting too much pressure on that that poor horse. But yeah, we were just walking through the winter time, uh, winter time area, which I guess is all of Skyrim. <laughs> and um, walking through Skyrim, but it was but it was really snowy. It was really snowy at this point. And Shadow Mare, you know, was was there, and then suddenly I heard the growling, and the, the you know the, the troll came walking up, and Shadow Mare was kicking at it, and this troll was throwing haymakers like whoa, whoa, and just man, Shadow Mare was getting t- like taking a task and and ran off like split like it was out so um i was surprised i have not seen like i've seen that horse fight dragons yeah and you know all kinds of stuff so i don't know i don't know if maybe we've put a little bit too much pressure on that horse um i mean we both kind of really really talked it up last week so maybe we need to maybe ease down give it some time to you know and that's fine shouldn't get, get back to being the shadow mare we know it is you know Br- bring what you're excited about to the action report that's all i ask i don't i don't we we will repeat ourselves. It's fine because I, it also gives me an excuse to tell stories like uh, the last time I played that game, I ran into um, the now, what's that called, uh, orphaned child of the my first chicken encounter in the game. So when I started that game, like I came out of the mountain or whatever, and I walked to the first mm-hmm. town and I killed a chicken. And the lumberjack and his wife chased me out of town, and I had to kill them. And I <laughs> returned here for a story quest, and I'm just kind of walking around, and you know everything seems fine. I don't really realize where I am, and I'm about to go on my quest with whatever lady from the inn. And I walk out, and there's this kid um, outside the inn, and I and I turn to talk to him, and he says, "I hope you die." And I was like, kind of like. <laughs> I kind of put it together. I was like, "Oh shit!" But yeah, I killed his parents. <laughs> and uh, oh my god, I didn't realize that. Batman. I... Yeah. It was, oh shit! I was it's... defending myself, man. Like, find me for you killing a chi- chicken, though. In, in in the wild west, you would is be that, hung for is that worth chicken. killing a man? I guess so. Well, I mean, I, I mean, what kind of a chicken is it? I mean, you don't know. Maybe that it's chicken a was a human chicken. that had been turned into a chicken. Whoa! A prize-winning Whoa. street chicken. Are we going to start marginalizing people now? <laughs> you said what kind of chicken was, this was chicken it? Was this chicken socio? But a street chicken? How do you know it just wasn't a chicken that happened to be on the street? How do you know it wasn't their friend Tim who had gotten on the wrong end of a a transformation spell? And and, and he was like, "Hey guys, don't worry, it's me, Tim. I'm just going to cross the street." Uh, get some milk duds. Get some coffee. I'll be right back. Everything's fine, and and you're gonna cure me. This will be great. Finally, I, I'm human again. And then you roll into the town like a jackass and kill it. Just <laughs> oh look, a chicken. I'm gonna kill it. Yeah. <laughs> Those fucking guys that pushed over that big rock in Goblin Peak or whatever that is that, that happened this past week. You're like oh, it's a big rock. We should push it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. God damn, Justin, leave the chickens alone. <laughs> you know what you should get? Get the exploding chicken mod. There's a mod that, that actually oh, awesome. the chickens, they make them explode. So that might be maybe like either that's either going to like prevent you from doing it well, in the future, or it's going to make you want to do it more. I think so. if I got the exploding chicken <laughs> mod, that would like would have at least justified people's actions. Like I'm not even convinced <laughs> anyone saw me do this. I think they just saw dead chicken with an arrow through its head and me with a bow on my back and assumed a lot of things and chased me out of town. And I really <laughs> so tried really not good to detective. kill those people, but they were not letting me go. Man, that was. <laughs> Maybe Benson lives in that town, and she saw that case immediately. <laughs> she, she, she was like, it was him. It was him. See him? It was him. That, it was that the worst part was like, you know, the husband came at me. He's big. You know, he's big. Uh, well, not Lumberjack, but he was the he was the weaponsmith of the town. And he, he came at me and, like, had weapons, and, the, and I had to take him down. And then I was, like, kind of just hoping the wife, who was weaponless, would just leave. But she just... She just kept hitting me, and 
I'm the victim. Mad, I'm, saying, it. I'm the victim. It made you mad. She kept hitting you. It made you mad. It made you mad that <laughs> somebody would hit you that you didn't know. Why didn't you just like you you realize you could injure you know people in that game to a point where they kneel and they say please no more. Did you even give them that opportunity, or did you just go for the death blow? Pretty, pretty sure she kneeled and then I shot her. <laughs> so there is no remorse. You don't. You don't feel bad for any of this stuff. You did. You you goaded them, and I know no, what you did. I did. You killed that chicken, so they would chase you. You killed that chicken, so they would chase you. No, they didn't. This this pent up love for Lydia that you won't show her. <laughs> you can see has resulted go in. Go back an to the replay. You can see the innocence in my eyes when I'm drawing that bow back to shoot this chicken because. <laughs> Oh, I just, I've never <laughs> seen innocence in any of those eyes. Oh my god! I like this uh, Doctor Moses hour. We're gonna get to the root of this. <laughs> let's let's really um let's really talk about why did you kill that chick? Let's really. <laughs> I like killing animals in video games. <laughs> <laughs> my dad took me to the butcher shop and then he left me. <laughs> yeah, so everything has to die. That's one really, thing. Yeah, like your your parent. Yeah, like. Chat still wants me to marry Lydia, but Lydia wasn't around at that point, so she hasn't seen this side of me. So, oh god, don't yeah, don't do that to. She loves you so much. Don't do that to her. Oh my <laughs> god, poor Lydia. Her heart. Try to convince you. Oh man. Any other <sighs> games you want to talk about, Ethan? I finished up Resident Evil Revelations. Oh, you did beat uh, it last week. Yeah, yeah. I didn't beat it on stream because I was having issues, and I was like, ah, fuck it. No one cares about the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty solid game, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But every Resident Evil game is exactly the same. I, realize it now. I guess maybe I didn't like it. It always begins mysterious, and then it ramps up, and then it's like, oh shit, something just turned into a blob. <laughs> like, like jump in a helicopter. <laughs> Let's take it out. Like it was such a ridiculous ending to it, but like it was so much less ridiculous than it should have been more ridiculous than it was. But after playing Resident Evil Six, like no Resident Evil game is as ridiculous as that was. Um, in a good way, I was entertained. But yeah, I mean, I really like I I really like that whole. That whole thing, I, I, I'm still just this. The whole outfit thing is, is still <laughs> on my mind, and and I don't want to talk about it too much because I talked about it last week. But that's still weird. But yeah, it was, it was perfectly fine. I, it's weird though because there's some really like lame characters in that game that I expected to die that didn't die, and I was like, oh man, like Conan like, O'Brien. Co- yeah, like Conan O'Brien. <laughs> spoilers, you know. We want, you know, I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, that game's been out for a while. Conan O'Brien, I was like, come on, really? So I'm, I'm really concerned that you know, re- the talk of Resident Evil Seven has been, you know, uh, out and about at this point. And what's I this Conan O'Brien? Conan shit? is not featured. He's a character in the game that looks exactly like Conan okay. O'Brien. Okay. Yeah, like, I think his name is Raymond. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Raymond, Raymond, and his 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 snazzy vest, who's well, like, just well, the, they put Conan what, in that fucking injustice. Uh, Heroes Among Us, or whatever the what was that? The oh, fighting oh, the game. big, yeah, the big C or whatever. Yeah, yeah he's got his special character. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if they if he would do this character, maybe it would be better. But this character is <laughs> awful. But I'm hoping there's not a spinoff of him. So, but uh, yeah, I, if if you really want uh, a more classic Resident Evil with with better mechanics, I guess better. Uh, this you'll probably like this, you know. Like I, I think you'll I think you'll enjoy this, especially if you were pissed off about five or six actually, because it it, it does things well. What if I love four and well. kind of like five? You'll like this okay. game. You'll yeah, enjoy it. So. Okay. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. And I can pretend six doesn't exist until they make me. I you know what I, I'm hoping for with six. I, I seriously like I hope that. And in five too, I hope five and six actually like Chris and Jill wake up from a dream. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> like what happened? It's like Dallas, you know, and like they're like, That'd oh be... shit. You know, you know just I, I right really after. Think, I really think Resident Evil fans would embrace that if it's like if this can get us back on track, and you can just say, you know, we'll pro- that people will probably even sacrifice Resident Evil Four at that point to just be like, if if you want to get back on track. We will yeah. we will take this dumb out like yeah but, yeah but, yeah Leon Leon and Chris and Jill all wake up in a room and they're like oh fuck what happened you know and, and then there's you know <laughs> there's like like a syringe sitting next to him that that, that says psychedelic and they're like oh fuck <laughs> you Clearly guys labeled. you got us yeah <laughs> psychedelic psychedelic. <laughs> Chris, we took way too much psychedelic. Can- Canon correction serum. <laughs> yes. 
I overdosed. Use the wrong herb. Oh. <laughs> Aaron, what other video games? Video games? Video games? There's nothing but Pokemon. No, so I put Pokemon down for a moment, and I got back into <laughs> Los Santos. I, I went back to, to San Andreas. Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh. I did have to recharge the battery, but <laughs> I played. To, I played a little bit more Grand Theft Auto Five, and I my excitement for that game, which some people did not share, had started to kind of go down a little bit. I would turn the game on and not know what I wanted to do. And so I was like, I need a break from it. And I'm glad I took one because I played a little bit over the weekend, and I was having some fun again. I I did some side missions. I rode a helicopter to the top of a mountain, and I parachuted. It It was like a midlife crisis in Grand Theft Auto V, essentially. (laughs) I did all the crazy shit, and I relived my teenage years all over. I I mean, I really I was having some fun. You know, I, I felt kind of out of touch with the... Uh, mainstream video game internet in the last month because it's been all Grand Theft Auto and all Pokemon. Yeah. But it's it's rare that those circles so overlap in a person as they have, have for you. Like, I'm not... Like, in other Definitely. lives, I would play both games, but the fact that, like, you are you have been into both of them is uh, is actually... I think that's more rare than we, we give it credit for. In fact, like, they're so far apart. And, oh, like, like, I had to put down Pokemon... Person. To play some Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> it's like I'm taking psychedelic. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you done any of the uh, online? I have not tried online in a while. I believe they've stopped putting out patches for it. Like it's pretty like much stable up. at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they got it stable. It's it should be under control. They lost some characters. They gave people money to make up for it. I haven't claimed my money yet, so I don't even know if I've lost that opportunity yet. But I, think it's uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of scared. All of October, so yeah. I need to turn that game on and get online. Yeah. But I'm always kind of intimidated about online worlds where things are persistent, just because. And it, like, like in the Call of Duty realm, if you could play a bad game of Call of Duty, some dude could be a dickhead to you, and you can just forget about it and move on. But Grand Theft Auto, like someone can steal your car if you have that setting, you know, disabled. Like drive your car into the ocean, get out, and just you know shoot you in the head and walk away and that's like way too much stress for me to have to deal with knowing that someone in this game lobby is just waiting to just fuck it all up for me yeah yeah and so i've, I've stuck to the story but, for now but so i've heard those kind of stories and i'm like you can't if you're gonna play grand theft auto online and like somebody randomly kills you and ruins your day or just like <laughs> like griefs you i was like I don't yeah. feel sorry for you. I don't know what you expected out of that game. It, it's it's such a hypocritical <laughs> thing, but it's like it's it's the fear. The fear is in me of knowing that someone can do what you spent so many like every entry in the game is you doing that one thing at some point in the game. You're gonna steal someone's car, you're gonna shoot a dude, and you're just gonna feel no remorse. You're like, that's the game, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you know, <It's- laughs> but I think like I, but I've seen two sides of this like and and, and the only kind of I guess anecdotal evidence I have this is when I was playing uh, the War Z or Infestation Stories or whatever it's called now is is there's playing the game and like expecting to die and then griefing. I think there's a huge difference between that. And, and I feel like with Grand Theft Auto, everything that I've read from people, it's like there are people that are just there just – they don't care about you having fun. They don't even really care about themselves having fun. They're just there yeah. to – Especially when you spend time to collect things and you, like you earn money and that kind of stuff. I don't know those those are tough games to play. There is a certain amount of stress. You either go in and you don't care at all, or you have to care so much that you play like every single fucking day and you are really cautious and you know exactly how to play the game. Because or else that that mid ground isn't super fun. It's actually kind of it's, like it's not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I I kind of I kind of see. I would like the chaos more if there wasn't like it sounds like the 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 persistent aspects of it could be. I just I just picture I just picture some Grand Theft Auto Grand Theft Auto online victim just getting getting on voice chat to everybody in there and says, "Hey guys, can we can we just obey the law for a while?" <laughs> <laughs> Can, can, can I just call off limits on everyone that's real? <laughs> Actually, that would be a fun way to play that game is to c- try to play it like as a cop. like mm, And just anytime yeah. you see yeah. it, like, you go hunt the per- hunt that person down. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to be a you know an employee of the state and just go after people 
and say, hey, that dude had a lot of money and a really sweet looking ride, and you just you just ruined his day. I'm gonna have to book you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real asshole. <laughs> You're a real asshole. <laughs> Who is the troll? I'm writing that on the ticket. You're a real asshole. <laughs> But I mean, otherwise, I'm having a lot of fun. I still enjoy switching between three different characters and seeing what wacky situations they're they're taking in, you know, taking part in when I'm not playing as them. The the writing's still pretty sharp to me. I I, I like the story mode. I'm I guess that's what I bought it for. I bought it for the yeah. story mode. I don't even think I knew it had online. Really, no. I wasn't paying much attention. Yeah, it was a free add-on, in my opinion. So that's what it sounds like. So, I mean, they did a good job. I mean, a rocky launch on that online, but, fine. I mean, they did a good job of carrying over the idea of what Grand Theft Auto It'll is into a multiplayer space. A ton of money off of it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do okay. Anything else, Aaron? My wife and I are still trying to continue our way through new Super Mario Brothers U on the Wii U. So bumping the new cheddar, causing, causing pain. Oh, God. So, like, we've reached the point where... Like, how do I buy? I pretty much, you know, Impulse bought a $300 system <laughs> to get Wind Waker. And I'm like, there's other games with it. But, like, last night, so while you were, you were, you were streaming Eldritch, and I'm like, I'll just chill and, you know, watch you play that. And she comes up to me, and she's like, I want to play some new Super Mario Brothers U, but I'm stuck, and I need your help. <laughs> and so she's like, she wants to, me to play my Wii U. You're like, and I'm like 80 bucks uh, an hour, like, I'll do it. <laughs> Make me some sandwiches. <laughs> and so I, I was like, I really just didn't want to, but I'm like, she's stuck. I'm like, what kind of, what have I done to myself? If I hadn't bought this the system, I wouldn't be in this situation. The uh, the exchange rate for sandwiches in your house is is, is phenomenal. Holy it, cow. Is, it is. It's one sandwich amazing. equals eighty dollars an hour. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. They are good sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing sandwich. Sandwich stock market. <laughs> but I mean, it's a real. It's just a real interesting situation that I mean, she likes playing these kind of side-scrolling Mario games, and I mean, I, I do though. too. But yeah, they have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. But I I really want 3D World, but I mean, this one's okay. But I really you have to I wait like a month. When is that fucking game out? Yeah, it's like next month, end of next month. <laughs> I'm looking. We up. can uh, you can stuff a turkey and you know give the kids some 3D World. Yeah, let's mm. see here. Mm. A wonderful Thanksgiving treat. Oh, November twenty second <laughs> here in the states. Yeah, you can stuff the turkey with three D World. Yeah, I don't oh, think it'll taste very be, good. That would be a surprise. <laughs> that would be a surprise for everyone. Yeah, for well, you could cook it and then you can you know, stuff it in the stuffing. No, no, Aaron, you get you get to buy <laughs> that game, ex- and and then explain to your wife why you bought a PlayStation Four the week before. Well, okay, so. <laughs> I have officially canceled oh, my shit. PS4 pre-order. It does not exist anymore. You were really excited about Drive Club, weren't you? Man, <laughs> uh, forget forget Watch Dogs being delayed. I mean, I don't. Who cares about that? But then they said Drive Club, and I was, I really wanted to just team up with some bros and just stare at exhaust pipes, you know, until the <laughs> sun went down. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. I want to watch. Anymore. I really want to watch that rubber hit the road in slow motion. <laughs> Watch that slick, that that fresh rain sitting on you know top of the pavement, just splashing up as the tires I wish, go. Ooh. I wish some indie developer or somebody would just release a game called Sex with Cars, and it just was just <laughs> Zanga, and it was literally just cars on the road, and you just had the 3D camera you can rotate around it. Like you can't do anything <laughs> else in the game. Just go in and out of this car, and that's it. Sex that's, cars. Your, oh, that's so gross. You can imagine, like you could, you could press like the X button, you know, by the back, the rear passenger seat, and just slowly <laughs> open the door, yep. and the guy just starts like going, "Because mm, I mean, while he's doing it, isn't that basically what they sell us for every new console? Is those damn oh, it, it is sex with car yeah. demos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, look at we we modeled this car, we modeled this new hot car." You know, you can't even buy this thing yet. You can drive it in the video game. Swing the camera. So when are you... 360. When are you writing your apology letter to Jack? I, I'm going... Uh, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to get out of the country. I'm going to go to a little discreet cabin somewhere. Sit on the beach. Maybe a cabana. Cabanas are... You know, those are Ooh, the thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Jack, you know, won't find me. I'm going to change my name. I was going to say... Wipe my identity. Jack has means to track you down. He's got the means, but I'm, I've, 
I got there's a ton of seasons of Burn Notice out on DVD. I can just you know blaze through those, and I can learn what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll find me. So oh, man. now that you've canceled, like taking a fresh look at it, where are you leaning for? Which one? I'm not giving you a time frame, but which one do you think you pick up first? Uh, so between the one and the four. Yeah. <laughs> the bone and the quattro. I'll, I should keep my threes, I guess. <laughs> I really don't know. It's hard to say because, I, yeah, with perspective, I I kind of have reached this point of do I even care anymore at the moment? I've been a – I think being a late adopter has worked out well for me on a ton of these systems. Okay. You know, give them time to you know get through their software updates, their hardware updates, um, get the slim version, uh, the shiny platinum metallic special edition. Yeah, That's like true. like the Wii U. I wait for the Wii U to drop fifty dollars and give me a game I already owned, but they made it so damn pretty, so I can <laughs> wait for you know Microsoft or Sony to you know step up that game, give me Watch Dogs special edition. Oh, you have no interest in having bundle such cars. It's the console itself with <laughs> with Drive Club <laughs> and. You know, they they deliver it to your house in a car that's not out yet. A Bugatti shows up in your driveway. Ooh. And they let you stick a finger in the tail. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Of whoa. the car. Of, of the well. Ugh. It's What's quite Bugatti? shiny in there. Bugatti. She's dirty, man. Bugatti's dirty. Bugatti, Bugatti sounds black. Bugatti's <laughs> pretty filthy. I mean, hmm. if it's a Fiat, you know that's pretty gross. Everybody got their finger in Bugatti. Everyone. <laughs> Yeah, Multiple fingers. Bugatti. A whole <laughs> fist. Wait, was I talking about I don't Mario know. to start? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to put the Brazzers logo pipes. on this, this, this episode. <laughs> Just on this part. Yeah. Um, um, Buffkin's, uh, Buffkin's Wii U <laughs> Drive Club Adventure. <laughs> Fuck you, Buffkin. Are we doing game pitches now? No. Are we doing game pitches? I don't know. I think it is. that? I, hope I didn't even see that really. transition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't use it because I gotta go to new releases because I want to say the word Batman Arkham Origins and I want a reaction from both of you. Wait now? Yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> say it again. Batman Arkham Origins. What? What? Where's oh. my game? Yes, Where's sir. my game? Where to my game? Oh man! Where's my game? That video made me. Both my parents are dead. <laughs> I need that game. <laughs> Can I sound more like like an asthmatic, like a, like a, like a bat? My inhaler, Alfred. I'm actually an old man. I don't don't, don't mistake me for a bad man. <laughs> I ran two miles, Alfred. So that actually comes out Friday, which is really Friday. Weird. Yeah. Hmm. Um. I am. Definitely wait and see with the reviews, but I've been getting in the Batman mood, and I just kind of like, dude, just just go play Arkham City again. That's really what I need to do. I don't really need to buy this one, but I don't yeah. know. I've been thinking about playing Arkham City, so maybe we could, you could play it, I could play it, we could talk about it. Okay. We'll talk about Batman, yeah. but not Arkham Origins. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding out hope, but I expect to be crushed as well, so... Let's wow, see what that's else. A, that's a great outlook on life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut for PC. Uh, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> he did. I think that's the one that fixes the boss fights, though. So. Oh, I did. Uh, maybe. How, how did they fix the boss <laughs> fights? You, can can you now talk your way out of them? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Just somebody said they're better. <laughs> um, Eldritch is, uh, of course, out this week. You already talked about that. Um, Ethan, you have a game out this this week. I had no idea that you were both a mouse and a meteor hunter. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm a, I'm a mouse and a meteor <laughs> Ethan hunter. Ethan the meteor hunter. Ethan the meteor hunter, yeah. I actually saw this on at Gamescom. I was like, oh, that's my name. And then Josh Lee sent me a link and said, are you a meteor hunter? So, yeah, I guess, you know, there is only one person in this world named Ethan, and I'm, I'm, I don't know yeah. if there's a copyright, you know. Ethan like, Hawk. Um, Ethan, uh, yeah. That, yeah. But apparently that's not going to be all, all that good from some of the reviews I was reading. Uh, either of you know oh. anything about how to survive other than top-down zombies is what I saw. I will be streaming that tomorrow or Thursday. All right, all right. Because um, I, I, I was like, eh, this is going to be just another one of those games. But actually, Rock, Paper, Shotgun um, said 
decent things about it, and they don't say decent things about right, even decent things. They're assholes. <laughs> they are. They are. I pay attention. Uh, they when are they say probably, something positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, I mean when they that say that in a, like a complimentary way that they are assholes. Absolutely. They 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 have the um, they're not. I, I don't know if what would you say Gersman or RPS are more like like when they say something's good, it's good. I, RPS anymore. <laughs> Gersman and I have had our yeah. differences in the last couple of years, so. Um, okay. But that's just me. Um, yeah. Lego Marvel superheroes. I'm keeping an eye on that. That might. Hot damn. That might show up on the charity marathon. That could be some good dumb fun. Oh, that would be. Fun. I love. Didn't Josh I, Lee buy that? Probably somebody had to. Um, I think he did. I mean, somebody's got a. I, I love the voiced Lego characters. So um, we'll see if, you know, let's see if they broke the formula yet. But I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, let's. Path of Exile is finally out for reels this week. Free to play. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. I, and I gotta say, actually, I I pop back into the game and um, that would, yeah. they've they keep making it better. I mean, it's it's that's a game it's that I, I'm actually it, it's it's the game again. I'll say it again that anybody everybody was expecting of Diablo 3 if if you didn't like Diablo 3 because you didn't think it was great enough or it was lacking in certain departments um, you should play Path of Exile or, stop complaining stop being wanted, little bitches or you wanted your uh, <laughs> skill tree to explode your brain this one yeah I mean, uh, this one, yeah your, yeah your passive skill tree at that yeah it's pretty intense but and, that's great yeah it's cool and I, I discovered this isn't out on Steam. You have to go to their website, but Warface is indeed out this week, and you threatened to play this game. Is that still on the docket? I, I, uh, I tapped in the tutorial and um, started that and was like, yeah, all right. Yeah. I oh, can boost my friends face? up. Yeah, my face was <laughs> blow. As soon as, I, as soon as I started the game, I didn't expect this. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> Like that's like that's the first reaction I had. I, I don't know what to expect of this game. Uh, I, I'm gonna give it a chance though. Um, but you know, I don't know it, it, if it doesn't have a single player campaign. Like I only like these games yeah. because of the single player campaign. Yeah. Like I'm excited for Call of Duty single player campaign. Uh, Warface doesn't have a single player campaign, so what's to be excited about? Uh-oh. You know? But what is that? Oh, weird. Um, Just Dance Kids 2014. Aaron will be getting that. Yep. Look forward to my uh, heart pounding <laughs> review sometime later this year. <laughs> Rocksmith 2014. I got to check in with Cole on that. I think he's actually played a little bit of the Rocksmith stuff. There's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Apparently, I don't know what that is. Another yeah. one? Yeah. Didn't one just come out? Like the yeah, content. one just came. The Out of the Shadows one came out. Let's People hate it. That. that thing doesn't. Yeah. And so now there's a Nickelodeon one out, and who knows? Turtles, turtle power. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, Chris, and Chaz playing Just Dance for Kids for the kids. Charity. <laughs> um, I, I don't trust that. <laughs> let's see. Oh, Alien Rage on PS3. Beer Pong! Exclamation point for PSN. Um, <laughs> just play it for reals. Yeah, you just do it. Even if you have to do it by yourself. We party yeah. you, because you've always wanted to play Mario Party with your me's. Um. <laughs> I didn't know I did. That just yeah. I didn't either, but I, I but you do because <laughs> Nintendo says so. Nintendo says so. You're gonna love this. You're gonna really love this. I'm yeah. feeling it now. Uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. I don't remember which one that is. What? Yeah, that's when's 3S. that? Out? Apparently, sometime this week. What? The fuck? October twenty fourth. Don't don't what lie to me. The <laughs> fuck? What the goddamn fuck what are you the... talking about? <laughs> Let's, let me double check the other the other source here. Other source does not have that. Yeah, you're scaring the shit. No, out of no, me. no, no. Eshop download. Oh my god. Yep. Watch out for your Phoenix. My life right. is ruined. Pokemon is in trouble. Um, Just Dance is on the side. I gotta play Phoenix right. And then I haven't heard anything <laughs> on it recently, but I I will be checking out reviews to see if Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, a 3DS Metroidvania ish Batman game, is oh. worth picking up. It's gotten mixed I hope. previews. Maybe uh, not. <laughs> or on DSI where you can get Crazy Chicken Director's Cut. So. Don't you get that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you I'm dare not, not do allowed, that. I'm not allowed near anybody's chickens. Um, <laughs> the Borderlands 2 DLC uh, is out this week. TK Baja's Bloody Harvest. 
Apparently it's pretty short, but it's also pretty cheap. Um, These phones. And I think that'll about do it for new releases. Um, get some game pitches going here once Aaron stops looking confused. All right, taking care of business. Game pitches, I want to start with uh, chat through this out in the middle of our all of our grand thefting. Um, Grand Theft Pokemon, Aaron, start us off. <laughs> well, I gotta do Grand Theft Pokemon? You gotta, you gotta start the pitch, and then we're gonna, we'll build off of it. So, Grand Theft Pokemon, I, I like the idea more so of it being that it's Grand Theft Auto, but the people are Pokemon. <laughs> and no one can talk to each other. Like, everyone just says their name, except for Pikachu, who, you know, says Stan. Stan. So it's about you know. <laughs> so Pikachu now named Stan has a midlife crisis, and he just he just wants to cause as much destruction as possible. Oh, it all takes place inside of a Pokeball, so it's a contained unit. So that's how he gets away with all the chaos, <laughs> and that's also why it's like an island and not connected to any other part of the world. But somehow a bunch of people are there. Oh my God. Whoa, you just kind of blew my mind. What if that was what Pokemon was all about? What if, what if Pokemon, everyone's a Pokemon? Yeah. Everyone is inside their own ball, and then there are balls inside of the balls, and it's just level. It's inception levels deep. Until you get to oh Men in Black. Oh, my God. Until this you get to Men in Black 4. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith will do it. This is next level Pokemon shit, man. <laughs> and so... uh Oh, and so instead of stealing cars, like we're not even ha- we're gonna drop the auto part because we don't need that. It's like Saints Row Four; you don't need the cars, uh-huh. and it's about stealing other balls, which have w- entire worlds inside of them <laughs> that revolve around other people. So you're stealing people's worlds, and then like you're destroying them and you're making them your own. You're absorbing other people. So it's about causing your own chaos, uh, but whoa. you gotta protect your ball because someone else is bigger out there and they're trying to get it from you. You're trying you to steal just... your life. You went from just happy-go-lucky Pokemon <laughs> fan to, to ma- maniacal tyrant in like li- like two point five seconds. Like Grand Theft Pokemon. You know that would you were Grand <laughs> Theft ruin everyone's life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm complaining about all the stress of playing Grand Theft Auto online, and then I just set up an entire game that I would be too scared to play. <laughs> you des- destroyer of worlds. Exactly. It's. It's rough out there went, for uh, Pokemon, for Stan. Place. Yeah, I did in real dark place. <laughs> That's all Stan knows. Oh, man. I like it. I'd play it. Ethan, what's your pitch? <laughs> uh, my pitch is John Quigley's Too Hot to Handle Club Simulation. <laughs> um, I actually put thought into it this, this time because I was at a club last week and I was woefully unprepared for what you know what was happening. Um, and, and I like the idea of a nervous middle-aged man like myself um, making his way into the club and kind of, you know, doing what it takes to be accepted in the club but not too accepted, which is where the, the too hot to handle comes into play. Because, like, if you're really accepted at a club, you're not accepted outside of the club, if that makes any sense. Like, real big club mm. people are a bit weird. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of trying to create this, this middle ground of – cool but not too cool uh you're trying to move through the crowd um while grinding um platonically because here's the thing that people kind of mistake about grinding is is you you can't just grind on anybody you can grind on friends <laughs> good advice uh family if that's your thing pokemon if you're Aaron. um <laughs> Yep. But uh, but kind of having this balance of you know how many drinks should I have you know and 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 should I should I pop this e I, I don't know <laughs> my first time is here I've e? never done this before is <laughs> is this even e um but you know just I don't know I like the idea of, of and maybe it's like a Stanley Parable type game in which like every day is you keep going to the same club yeah. and you can do different you know, do it's different things and, oh and shit it, it well rogue like club simulation game yes like you, you walk in immediately and some girl goes I want to make out with you and you make out with her herpes you're done herpes game over for <laughs> herpes. herpes you're herp you got herp um you know or or I don't know and maybe you dance your way to the coveted, and everyone knows this if you've been to club, when the moment that happens, and this is everyone just wants this to happen to them, I think, um, when a good song gets on and you just get into a groove and then like the, the club parts and they give you maybe like a five by five square to dance in the middle of. 
that is That's the- that, but that, but that is as as close to too hot to handle as you can get before you get over over that. You know, before all the girls want you, because in this situation you're also married. So oh, no. you don't want Robin you know said, what I mean? So yeah, so it's it's, it's suddenly you know, went it's, autobiographical. It's a, it's a lot of, yeah. yeah, except what have you been it, doing. Except it wasn't E that I took, it was it's math. What are the penalties for being <laughs> what are the penalties for being too hot? Like what if you Yeah, what if you <laughs> You just you're you're sent in outer space. You can't be handled. <laughs> you just there's a, there's a rocket outside the club, um, and they just sorry, you're too hot, you can't be here on Earth. No, you, you your whole life breaks down around you. <laughs> when you I mean when you get absorbed in the club life, it's like the drug life or the or the gang life. Is is you gotta serious. kiss everything goodbye, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> club life. <laughs> club life. It's like a it sim. would be it would be me sitting in the corner going, Oh man, should I dance now? Nope, nope, not yet. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Nope, nope, not yet. Yeah. Song's too fast. This Song's is too slow. Too fast for my feet. <laughs> the scary thing is this game could probably work. I mean, everybody's what, cooking meth with their mouse clicks in the last week or so that like building up your club persona, I could see that catching on. Um mm-hmm. I was actually like yeah, you're wow. probably picturing more of the action oriented interface for this, like, you know, um more of a a top-down simulator getting, you know, you control the dance moves, maybe some, you know, some rhythm action, um, quick time events. Um, but I was also, what if, like, the developers of Paper Please, Papers Please got a hold of this and it became, like, really methodical, <laughs> like, in the way that you <laughs> would, like, just, like, you know, checking your, your, your fashion and compare, and making sure that it's up-to-date and that your dance yeah. moves are up-to-date and... Uh, mm-hmm. You basically have these gauges you check every morning of how trendy you are. Versus, you know, you know, not not too sexy, but sexy enough. You open up the newspaper. <laughs> Today's dance yep. move of the week is. Yep. <laughs> that's actually that's actually pretty good because because I imagine that that's what these people do because like you you have to be on top of things and and I I was you know, coincidentally was on top of it because everybody wears hoodies at this particular club so and you also have to, uh, you have to stay know. up to date on celebrity gossip because you'll be quizzed throughout the evening uh, you don't take you don't talk in the club okay no one talk you can't hear anything <laughs> so so maybe that's how like like that's when you get too hot to handle is you start talking celebrity gossip or maybe that's to the other end they're like get out of here we can't hear you but we know you're talking about celebrity gossip we need you to leave what if, it though yeah and <laughs> what if you like off. You know, you you blow your dance load too early by dancing to the wrong, like the not the hottest song. Like you think this is the one, but it's really the next one. <laughs> oh, they got you. They play they they weed them out. They play that song yeah. that you know those lamos think it's the hot one, but it's not. It's 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 a song that sounds like it's like, gonna drop and drop big, and it just it's never, never does. drops. <laughs> the song it's, never it stays drops. high. <laughs> the song and never like, dropped, oh. and you blew your MCL. <laughs> You're like, this is it. It's coming. It's been four minutes. Uh, it's gonna drop. I think it's gonna come. You guys, I swear to God, it's gonna drop. I know. <laughs> it's, I've heard this song. I've been in this club before. <laughs> You've been kicked this out of the club. Yet it's coming. You've been kicked out of the club for lying about the drop too many times. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. It's vibrating. Just the drop's him. coming. Watch him. He knows it's been when the nine beads minutes. Drop. I can, I can, I can tell when a snowstorm's coming in and when the beads about to drop. No, because of my knee. No, <laughs> because of my knees. I was gonna say, I was gonna say you can also uh, hear the sandstorm coming. <laughs> That's the Darn. extent of yeah, uh, techno jokes I can make. Um, Aaron, actually, <laughs> your game might tie nicely into this. What do you got? <laughs> my game might tie nicely. Oh uh, man, so there's a big hullabaloo. I wanted to say that. I just want uh, from. <laughs> <laughs> That's my game. That's all I wanted to say. If, uh, if there was a beat that had been dropped, it's you saying hullabaloo. It was me. <laughs> hullabaloo. <laughs> so uh, Beyond Two Souls came out recently, and Quantic Dream got caught having a little bit of nudie business Hey-o. in that. So uh, the main character Jody, a female, modern after Ellen Page, got caught. If you uh, have a special. PS3, I think you can break special the camera and you can see her. <laughs> a special perverted the PS3. Version? Wait, where you are you see the new version. It's, it's a game! Okay. So, David Cage has revealed his true intentions, you know, 
heavy rain. You know, there's a little bit of nudity in that one too. So he's just trying to warm people up to the idea of, you know, I'm going to put some nudies all up in this. And so eventually he's going to drop what I like to call, once I find is, it. Is, <laughs> is Quantic Dream going to pick up the 3D Sex Villa license? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm telling you. So David Cage is going to create David Cage's creepy QTE extravaganza. And no one's going to be ready for it, but it's just going to be a wild adventure. You know, multiple endings. Press X to do all sorts of weird shit. And <laughs> just everyone's just going to be naked. And you're going to make like decisions. They'll, it'll play just like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls. But like, the entire time, you're like, damn, everyone's naked. And I had to make decisions. But on the other hand, you're like... I, I kind of expected this. They should be on the back of the box. <laughs> Press X to do crazy shit, <laughs> make Press decisions, <laughs> and runs naked. <laughs> Press X to take E? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, everyone's... You're, you're going to be you're gonna be surprised, but everyone's just going to take it in. They're going to play it. No one wants to question it. No one wants to be like, should, is everyone in this game naked? Is this for real? You know, it's, it's going to be the cool thing. You're going to read the paper, and the paper's going to tell you the hot dance move, and underneath that, there's a whole article about, you know... Don't don't bring up the nudity in David Cage's, you know, naked extravaganza. And in the end, Chris and Jill wake up and it was all a dream. <laughs> There's so much psychedelic <laughs> empty syringes so much... everywhere. <laughs> you can you can taste the psychedelic in the air. How how do you even take psychedelics? Is it in a syringe? Because I have no idea. I really uh, don't. It's in a water gun, and <laughs> like what are the kids like the kids? Yeah, like, you, sh- you shoot straight up your butt. <laughs> That's pretty much how you take psychedelic. Wait, does somebody on roller way. skates have to do it? Yeah, someone on roller skates <laughs> runs up to like, you. Just kind of lean over, and you're like, That's "Give me that game. psychedelic." I think you just That's talked about the next gen paper boy. It, it, it's a <laughs> kid on roller skates with a super soaker full of <laughs> drugs. He just goes down the street and just shooting people in the butt. <laughs> it's yep. a psychedelic. You and can't if you miss, miss your deliveries, you- man. You can't miss the deliveries. Like the dude gets mad. Like the guy like, pulls his pants up and chases you. Like, damn it, I paid for that psychedelic. Where's my psychedelic, <laughs> kid? Damn you, kid on skates, get back here. We need to come, what? With, a... No. We need to come <laughs> with a better name than kid on skates, though. <laughs> kid on skates, why not? Kid on uh, skates. Really I don't know your name, Stan Pikachu. Get back here. <laughs> oh, that was fun. All right, I think that's it for Night Force. Ethan, Aaron, you did a satisfactory job. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, you both, uh, received, you both so received on drugs. passing grades and can return again. Chat, you did cool. unbelievable. Uh, you are more than welcome to return. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, Night Force will be back again next week, and we will catch you then. See ya. Unless we get canceled.